Okay, what I got here today, this is one of the wheel sets off the live steam engine that I've been uh, working on. And what I wanted to do is uh, make sure that the wheels were machined true to the axle. So um, I've set this up in my lathe and I've machined this side already. So I have this chucked in the lathe and I, I've got a dial indicator on the spindle here. And I've already trued this. And if you look, when this turns, I'm within a half a thousandth of, of that spindle being true. So when you start the lathe, it's, it's running good. So that, that's, that's as true as it needs to be. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to take my uh, tool and I'm going to machine the, the, the face of the wheel, this face of the wheel, and the flange on this wheel. Now this wheel has some rust on it too. Um, it's not really running badly. It's it's pretty good actually as far as trueness goes, but I got to get rid of this uh, rust. Now rust is extremely hard when you go to machine it and I've got to use a carbide tool which I have in my tool holder, but if you try to machine on rust with a uh, like a general purpose high speed steel tool, it'll dull it. It'll, it'll, it'll put a groove in it almost immediately. Um, rust is uh, it's really bad to machine it, so you, you, I'm going to I'm going to sand that off as much as I can before I machine this. So what I've done, I've taken my center drill and I've drilled the uh, face of the flange here and I've, bought, I've, got a, uh, I've got a live center in here. This little mark is, is the center drill that puts the, the uh, little indication. This spins, so what I do is I bring this up into the into the center drill hole and lock it in place there and that allows this assembly to have a support on the out edge, outer edge and it, it, it'll keep it running true. So what I'm going to do um, in a minute or so is take a light cut on the, the face here on the uh, part that rides on the rail. Now this part here is at a four degree angle so I've got my compound on the lay set at four degrees so I'll use this lever to feed in the tool and, and I'll, I'll make a nice cut at four degrees and then I'll, I'll machine the, the top of the uh, flange here and, the, and a very light cut on the back side of the wheel and then that wheel set will be uh, very true and it'll be, it'll be nice. I've got some uh, very coarse sandpaper here. And I want to try and get as much of that scale off this wheel as I can because uh, it's, never, it's not good for the tool so I'll give it a quick clean up and that should be good. Now what I'm going to do is, is bring my uh, Bring my compound in with my carbide tool. I'll bring it up. Now this wheel's running pretty good. You can, you can, you can hear the noise, it's not bad. So I'm going to take a nice light facing cut on this thing. Now it cleaned up. It cleaned up partially, but it's not completely cleaned up, so it's a little bit out of true. Now that's pretty good. Now this, this face of the wheel is more for aesthetics than for actual functionality, but this serves the wheel rides on the rail, so this has got to be true and, and at the correct angle. So I'm going to adjust my uh, tool a little bit so I can make a proper cut with this. Lock it in. Now I'm going to use the cross slide feed here to do the four degree angle. This is, this is set to come in at, at four degrees. taken a light cut and uh, it cleaned up in some spots and it's a little bit out. So. I'll feed it in a couple more thousands. Just 
cast iron in general is very abrasive to cutting tools in any case. So uh, it's always best to use a cast iron tool. If you get your brake drums or your rotors cut on your car, you're made of cast iron. All the cutting tools on those brake blades are uh, cast iron, or uh, carbide rather. So now that, that's cleaned up. Uh, I'm not going to take any more uh, material off than necessary. So now I'm going to come back in and contact the, the face of that flange here. And chew that up. So now this is uh, all, all machined off. It's running nice and true. Um, now I'm going to take a cut across the, the top of the flange here just to true that up. Again, that's more for aesthetics than anything else. Okay, now on this side I'm going to machine the back of this flange here, and this again is more for aesthetics so it looks good. And I'm using a carbide tool here, but I've got a cut on this side of the wheel. And the tool I have, normally you'd use it like this, but i got to use it upside down like that in order to get the clearance to... Uh, machine that so because I'm using this cutter upside down I've got to run the lathe reverse of what I'd normally run it so normally when you run this lathe it turns towards you I'm gonna run it backwards and that'll that'll compensate for the tool being upside down so now I'll start the lathe backwards And that's good. That's all I'm going to take off because this wheel's really running true, and there's there's no point in taking off more. And every time you put a uh, a lathe tool to, at a piece in the lathe, you ri run the risk of it grabbing it and destroying it. So uh, I'm going to stay ahead of the game now and stop here. This is this is good. The whole the whole uh, the whole wheel is run running very true. Both sets of wheels are, are running parallel to each other, and, and they're going to work great. Those pieces in the middle spinning, those are the those are the uh, axle journals, and uh, they fit into the frame. So uh, I'm just going to leave them on for now. There's very little wear in this, so uh, that's it.